There are two easy action script actions that we can add that will move the playback head one frame forward or one frame backwards. We can take some of the examples we've created and simply add these in very quickly. Right here we have our starting and ending example. and They both have the same movie clip rotating in the center and they both have a play and stop button. The finished one we're going to add a step button for stepping back one frame and a step button for stepping forward one frame and that's the difference and if we hit the step button we notice we can move the animation one frame at a time forward or one frame at a time backwards. So let's see how we make this. Let's open up the starting file. And we'll save it under another name. And let's take a quick review of what we have in the movie. <clears throat> we have four items in our library. First is the red rectangle that has a basic rectangle shape in it. And then we have, and that's a movie clip. There's a red rectangle rotating clockwise movie clip, which has our about 120 frame animation for rotating. And we have our play and stop button. We go down to the scene one timeline. Well, on our bottom layer is where we have the rotating rectangle, and that has a name, uh, rotation underscore MC. We'll look at that in the code. And we also have our two buttons, our stop and play button on a layer called control. So let's open up the code window. We'll select the action script layer frame one and open up the actions window. And we can see in here we have our basic actions that we've completed in previous examples. So let's add our buttons. And so we'll close the actions window temporarily and we'll go to window, common libraries, buttons. And we'll open up the classic button node. And under there are some circle buttons. Let's move this over a little bit. And they have a button called step ahead and step back. So we'll take the step back button and just select our controls layer frame. And we'll drag the step back button somewhere under the play button. And they have a step ahead button, which we'll then drag to the a stage under the stop button and you can position these as you like and we don't need this window any longer for the common library buttons now we need to give each one of these an instance name for action script so we'll start with the step button to move us back come up here to properties and I'm going to name this step and then the capital letter P for previous and then underscore button for the step button, I'm going to name this step, capital letter N for next, and underscore button. And we'll go back to the actions window, and we'll select the actions layer. And what we'll do is we'll just copy the code for the stop button, select all those lines, and you can copy them. Click underneath, and then paste them. And we'll do is change the stop button to the name of the button for moving back one frame. And what I'll do is I'll select the target button up here and click on that button's instance name. And then I can copy it here out of this little panel. And that'll save me from typing it incorrectly. And then I'll paste it over top of the word stop button. And I'll do that in a couple places and it'll save us some time and get us some accuracy. Okay, and there's our third spot. I'll just resize this window a slight bit. Now down here where it says rotating underscore MC dot stop, we want this to go back one frame, so I'm going to highlight from the period to the end of the line. And what we can see is if we hit the period, we'll get some help and what we want to actually add so we can either peruse this or if we sort of know the spelling of the action we want we just start spelling it. It happens to be pre-frame P-R-E-V and there it is pre-frame. We can just click on it and it will put out the rest of it helping us to finish. It's a open paren, close paren and then a semicolon to mark the end of the line. So that's all we need to move back one frame 
for any timeline, and in this case we're talking to a movie clip that's on this timeline. And we'll copy this code one more time. So we'll copy this last block for the step previous button. And we'll paste it underneath. I'll add a line and then paste it. What we need to do is change step previous button to the one for our next button. Again, I'll use the target icon at the top here and choose the next button and then just copy out the button name. And then come down here and highlight the places that it needs to be changed. Three places in our code and one for the comment. So there's the first one. I used the shortcut key to paste there. And also our comment. Use the shortcut key there. Now on this one it's the action called next frame. So I'm going to highlight again from the period to the end of the line. Type in the period, start typing the word next, and there it is. You can just press the enter key once you see the one highlighted you want. And we need to finish that with a close parenthesis and then a semicolon at the end of the line. And that pretty much is the code we needed. We really just needed these two actions, pre-frame and next frame. And now we can test our movie. So off the main menu, control test movie, or you can use the shortcut key. And we can play the movie. We can use the step button, which actually stops it and just moves it one frame at a time. And I uh, use the step forward version of the step button, and then there's the previous version. And the other buttons work as they did before. Let's close this. Let's try something a little bit uh, different. We'll copy this rotating underscore MC next frame line. So I'm going to copy it, use a shortcut key, and I'm going to paste it four more times. One, two, three, four. So this will have the button move us ahead five frames at a time. Now if you're a programmer, there are more elegant ways to do this with loops and other ways that uh, might require some mathematical formulas, but this works great for beginning. And we'll try this again, test movie, and we'll start playing it, and then we'll use the step forward button, and you'll notice it's sort of jumping a lot quicker. Use the back button, you can see that's a little bit smaller increment, and the step forward button is moving at five frames at a time. All right, and we'll just undo this. We don't want these four lines, and that's our completed movie. And we'll run test movie one more time. And there you have it. That's basically what we wanted to do. Okay, we added two basic playback actions, uh, pre-frame and next frame. Pre-frame stops the playback head, moves you ahead, or moves you back one frame, and next frame stops the playback head, moves you ahead one frame. You can increase that number of frames by just duplicating the actions.